Welcome to the Hidden Driveway Show. I'm your host, Amu, and then joining me today, we have a very special guest, Porcelain, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Uh, hey, this is so crazy. Um, I'm Porcelain. Uh, I make music uh, with Star Forum, and um, I'm a little I'm a little man, you know what I mean? I'm a crooked man who mm-hmm. lives in this crooked house. <laughs> uh, I've really- got some stuff coming up. Mm-hmm. And just really quick, do you want to explain how we know each other? Because that's still, like, the craziest thing to me. Dude, okay, so we were just... I was, I was low-key, like, an Omega nerd back in the day. Like, I was, like... <laughs> I was dwelling on it. And I was, like... How old was I? Like, 14, I yeah. think? I was, like, 14. And uh, I think we met on, like, Drain Gang something. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Yabujin or something. About, yeah, we talked about Yabujin, and we were, like, talking about Duster and stuff. And, like, I think we you mentioned Earth 2, and I talked about Daria Core. <laughs> And here and we are like today, three one. years later. Yeah, it's a crazy time, man. It's it's so like weird to see how far we've came along mm-hmm. and became people. Cause yeah. like when I was on Omega, it was like just some kid, but now we're just like two people actually like doing things. I mean, we were both doing things at that point, just not to the level that we are now. Yeah, it's all to like a fruition now, mm-hmm. and it's like beautiful. I, I really like just how far we've actually came from everything. All right, well, to get us started, is there anything that you would like to talk about? Uh, anything on your mind at all? Can be literally anything. Today was great, low-key. Like, I had a really incredible day mm-hmm. today. And I'm just, like, I'm just excited to be able to, like, speak to you and talk about everything because, like, I don't know. It's been so long, and we've known each other for so long, and it's just, it's it's a great time. Uh, I just, I love talking to you, man. Well, I like that Rainbow Dash hat. I just noticed that. Dude, <laughs> do you love it? Dog, yeah, it's so this hard. This is, like, one of the hardest hats ever. I didn't know, like, I think this is one of the hardest hats I own, so I had to cop out mm-hmm. and wear it. It's crazy. I love it. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Right, and I appreciate that you enjoy talking to me. Also, I think this is the first time we've ever done, like, a face-to-face call, now that yeah. I think about it. Last time we did it, it was, like, a Flashpoint. We, I was playing Flashpoint games with you. Yeah. That was such a funny time. But, yeah, we, we didn't have face cam on, I don't think. Yeah. Ever. So, yeah, this is, like, a very surreal experience, honestly. Mm-hmm. So, in 2023, yeah. you released a compilation project called Dream Journal compiles every song you've created between 2018 and 2023 and while most people usually start making music in their teenage years you were only 11 years old at the time so <laughs> what made you start making music at such a young age because that's like really crazy because I, I was 13 so uh thank a uh, great question because it was okay so i started listening to joji and i was like oh this is like my first introduction to lo-fi hip-hop and then so like it was like cemented in me that like I wanted to make that because it was like at that time like for some reason the best music I had ever heard. So I uh, I got this program. It was called like Open MPT, and it's like a sequence tracking like thing. It's like for chip tune, mm-hmm. and I would just load samples into it and kind of like play them and play them in the sequencer and make like this awful lo-fi to try and sound like some thing sounding like joji so it all kind of starts back to joji honestly and then from there i went that's about it you know i went to fl studio Mm -hmm. and were you playing instruments at all when you started or did that come later because that's like a very big part of your music that came like uh three years later yeah that that was a bit Mm -hmm. after i uh, started actually because i couldn't like play anything until i was like 12 Okay, because when I had um, Orange Cake Mix on, he said that he was, like, 10 when he started playing guitar, so I didn't know, like, maybe that could have been you, but I guess not. Uh, I wish. I really wanted it to sound like I was, so I'd use guitar oh, samples. <laughs> oh. But I just, back then, like, music was, like, a really, like, that's when music started, like, getting into a peak in my life where I was, like, enjoying things and, like, understanding how things worked outside of me just, like, hearing music on like the radio or whatever that's what i started like actually like listening to music so that's like 
low key like as soon as i got a computer i was like i had to make something mm-hmm. and I, I that was like my dream i wanted to be like shot wasabi in the beginning and then i just never did that because he had like that whole midi fighter thing and i couldn't deal with that like that's too much okay wait important question did you have an ipod uh <laughs> yeah i had an ipod uh i had a ipod touch fourth generation yeah Wait, was Why? it the no because i think i was like the same age when i started getting into music more because i had an ipod nano and then eventually i ran out of space on that so then i got well no i had a shuffle first where i had mm-hmm. all my harry potter audiobooks on it and then i upgraded to get the nano but then i ran out of space on it so then i got like a full-on like ipod mm-hmm. um but yeah i'd listen to joji like on the, it too the rectangle ones like the 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 ones that were kind of like a like a squarish box yeah with the slider wheel that was the oh that the nano was that yeah yeah i had one of those two back in the day yeah okay yeah yeah yeah. and I, I was thinking about getting one to listen to music because i've been using fubar recently but i just like i love like the portability of the old ipods it's just so cute yeah I'm so like if I looked at what it was on there now though because I think I still have it, it's gonna be the most like seventh grade shit ever because I know I was bumping like like Nakey Jakey's music and like Twenty One Pilots on there. <laughs> Back in the day, I would like I would bump System of a Down and this band. I don't know if anyone knows what this is. It's Yay Sayer. It's this like really like it's really tiny band and it or not they're not tiny. They had a song on the Grand Theft Auto like soundtrack but it's a really tiny band that my um parents loved and i'd bump them and that like transpired into what my music taste is now honestly Mm -hmm. yeah shout out yay sayer shout out system of a doubt all right so on that topic so your music is influenced from a variety of different genres such as cloud rap folk vaporwave and sound claws just name a few so what would you say are some of your biggest inspirations oh uh james ferraro one oh tricks point never oh that's a that's a loaded question um james ferraro honestly like i can give all my love to him because like at the end of the day it all wraps back around to like i asia and all those projects man and one oh tricks point never he really like made me understand how to like sample uh and with my like actual hip-hop i'd say shout out of uh, mercy in the well uh, honestly, he he really pushed me to be, like, some, like, just do anything, and he, it can slide by, and that made me, like, experimental, like, that our project is, like, gonna be so exponential in terms of things, mm-hmm. but, uh, shout out Animal Collective, uh, they're a huge inspiration, uh, their album, Spirit, They're Gone, Spirit, They Vanished, uh is just i would explode if i listen not like that i would like actually burst into flames if i listen to that album right now like genuinely yeah all of them and shout out tame and paula they st- made me start making me- no, he he made me start <laughs> making music did you know they're one guy what what <laughs> did you know tame and paula is just one guy no i did not know that please tell me more <laughs> His name's Kevin Parker. Yeah. But those are really, like, my main influences. Mm-hmm. Um, I just... A lot of the time, like, a lot, a lot recently, I've been, in, like, influenced from a lot of weirder outsider sources. Like, some, uh... Like, I've been really into, like, some, like, weird electronic sound collage stuff for a lot of the stuff I make. And Dean Blunt! Shout out Dean Blunt! Shout out Dean Blunt! yeah that's that's a lot of my inspiration all right i also add a song because i thought you were gonna say him because i've always just assumed it but is yaya yi like up there also oh i can't believe i didn't say that dude oh yes oh yeah my beats oh 
gosh, sorry. I haven't been making hip hop as much recently, so I've kind of been like out of the loop on what I've been doing creatively with that. But oh my god, Mike, th shout out Mike for my for more of the the sample stuff. Shout out, shout out Earl. Uh, gosh, yeah, yeah, all of them. Like Yaya, -E really like bind M wheel plus yeah will would not be anything without Yaya. -Yeah -E. mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, thank you for mentioning him. Yeah, no, I was thinking, because I'll be real, I think Bind Wheel is the project you're so, like, most familiar with, and for me, Yai Yi is, like, all over that. Yeah, like, that was, like, I remember, like, I think we first became friends when I first started, like, getting into Yai Yi as much as I did. Mm -hmm. So that's when, like, all, like, the weird stuff started dropping for me, and that's where it all, yeah, that's where it all began. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Also, with that one Animal Collective album, I don't know what the song's called, but there's some song where it's like, I, I, I swear it's like 30 seconds long, but it's like the most beautiful, peaceful thing I've like ever heard. It's just like a high, <laughs> like, like, like I don't know, seconds. I have to look up is what it song it is. it untitled? It's like the shortest song on the album, wait. I think you're thinking of in Untitled. Wait. I have I to find that. it now. It's on, uh, it's on a song on my DJ mix. Ooh. No, everyone's whistling. That's what it is. Mm. I love that song. Sorry, I didn't even. I can't believe that didn't register in my head. Yeah, I can't ever listen to that album again. Not one time. Mm -hmm. Me and Mercy have talked. Yeah, it's. Ugh, that album is in its own space and time. I can't. I can't even. Oh gosh. Yeah. Were you ever um, playing Skate 3? Because that's how I... I didn't realize it was them, but that's how I first learned about Animal Collective. Because... Skate... Because <laughs> they were in there. And, like, MF Doom and, like, Pixies and, like, all those other bands were, like, in the soundtrack for some reason. Dude, I played Skate 3 from the age... Okay, I started playing it, like, I, I had played it before, like, a few times sparingly. When I got my own copy of Skate 3, I was six years old. I started playing until competitively throughout until i was like nine competitively skate three was like a, a an important part of my life like i would play it and i would be at these like teams i would create graphic designs for them if i could find some i'll show you uh, i'd create graphic designs for them i'd like I'd, I'd i can send clips of me doing like competitive skating in it and it was like that that was like shout out okay there's this rapper that his name's gnarly boy J. We played Skate 3 on PlayStation. He was one of the first friends that I ever added on my PlayStation, and we still talk to this day. <laughs> that's awesome. And we played Skate 3 when I was six years old. Shout out Gnarly Boy J, genuinely. That's crazy. Yeah, Skate 3 was so important. Wait, was he Gnarly Boy J, like, when you were six? Nah, he, was, he, he used to be the original Risky. I knew him as the original Risky on PS3. That was his username. And then he, uh, we started doing, like, teams and stuff, and he started, like, kind of, like, branching out. But, yeah, Skate 3 was... I, I love Skate 3 to death. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I remember the, uh, the soundtrack for it was, like, the most, like... Uh, I love they that that's that's kind of like what introduced me to like MF Doom and everything was that soundtrack and uh, yeah oh it's that that soundtrack I think you can hear a lot of those songs in my music influence honestly. No, I love the like main theme for the game. I don't know why they picked that song, but like I put on <laughs> that song is so hard. That song's crazy. I don't think I've ever, like, that song really, like, gets me excited. I love that song to death. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, <laughs> I remember, it, like, always being, like, annoying back then, low-key, but now I kind of, like, love it. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> that's a good song. Shout out, shout out all the people who made that, that <laughs> shout, song, shout I guess. Out Kanye. <laughs> but no, do not shout out Kanye. Do not shout out. Do not. Do not. Yeah, in Craig Busby, do not shout out Kanye. We are not shouting out Kanye. No, that's not happening. Okay, you know who we can't shout out? The what was the during the song of the soundtrack that was like, I am immortal. I always, I always play that one when I. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know what song you're talking about. Yeah, I love that, that one. Did not come to me. I am immortal. Yeah. 
I, I know what song. I think it. I don't remember who it's by, or I can't name that off. But yeah, that song's great. <laughs> yeah, those two were like the ones I always think of when I play Escape Three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. Wow. What's the, the that one Joy Division song that everyone knows? It's like the intro to uh, that album. Uh, Disorder. Yeah, that one. Such a good one. That's Such in the soundtrack too. Yeah. Disorder, Debaser by Pixies is the song on it. That one's good too. I love that song. Oh. And then they have that. They have that one song, uh, by ODB on it. That's a good one. Shimmy Shimmy Y'all. Oh, yeah. Classic. Classic song. Too good. Mm-hmm. Too good. There's an episode of Adventure Time called Jake the Brick, where Jake decides to take on a peaceful existence as a brick. So given their name is Porcelain, which is the material used for household items, if you could live life as any object, what would you be? Oh my god, that's, that is a, that's too good. <laughs> You're too good. You're too good. Let me think. Oh lord. Oh, that's a beautiful question. Oh my god. Okay. That's gonna, I'm gonna have to think about this one for a hot minute. Mm-hmm. I hope you know that. The... Uh, because that's a loaded question. And this isn't like an object show type thing. This is just like like you're a microphone. So I can be like something. Like I can be like... I can be like a common... Like if I said house. I mean, that's kind of cheap. <laughs> that's, kind, that's kind of cheating though. I don't know. Statue. Like... Okay, you can be a statue. <laughs> okay, I can be a statue. Um, I think I want to be like the Empire State Building. No, that's a wait. That's a that's a house. <laughs> it's low key. You know, I was I was thinking more like like a bed or something. Maybe not like a giant. <laughs> I mean, if you want to be like a, a oh wait, you could be a crane. That'd be I'm hard. Be a, what if I'm a bookshelf? Bookshelf? Can I be a bookshelf? You can be a bookshelf. Like just the shelf itself. Yeah. I want to be a beautiful bookshelf or like a beautiful vanity. Like mm-hmm. I'd love to be a beautiful like wood carved like vanity. That's yeah. Because mm-hmm. like I really love like the idea of like beautiful furniture and stuff like that it, 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 i don't know like a lot of it like gives me a certain sense of like nostalgia and yeah. care yeah it's a beautiful thing to me yeah stuff like that is very like massachusetts to me maybe that's just yeah, cuz like my gra- my grandparents <laughs> live there so i associate that's, with like older real. stuff but like that's always my vision that's i think that's kind of that. beautiful or I, I i'd be like an old grandma couch i'd be an Ooh, old grandma would you couch have like the, the plastic wrap over it that people grandmas that do that be freaks i don't know about all that <laughs> that's low-key freaky but i guess yeah 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 i would i'd like to keep it pristine because I, I like porcelain's got to be kept like you know together i guess in a way oh wait also wait is it is it porcelain because i said porcelain during the intro because you told me it was porcelain when i asked yeah. you about it it's both. I, I, porcelain, porcelain. What the people use in the conversation I use is oh. so I, it, it's more easily translatable. Like, it just keeps it s- steady. I don't want to, like, seem like I'm correcting someone. Okay, because when I was doing Judah's interview, I said J-No <laughs> during the intro, and we had to redo it because apparently it's Juno, and I didn't know that. Oh, wow. That's... Wow. It's like, it's like how Ray Stremmerd has the... What, I forgot. They have like a silent letter, but they just don't put it in the thing. I forgot what it is though. <laughs> Ray Shremmerd. Cause don't they say like one of the letters is silent in Ray Shremmerd? Do they say that? I swear that's, that's like the their H? explanation for because I know it's ear drummers backwards, but they got rid of a letter or something, right? Is that true? Am I, I, just I s- no. I, there's a video in my head somewhere <laughs> where they're like the er is silent or something, but there's no like. Wait, hold on, hold on, wait. Oh, it's the D, right? Wait, Ray Shrem... Wait, <laughs> silent letter, wait. The, the is silent. Yeah, the band has a clip where they show the name written in IPA and explain how it's pronounced. There's a silent H between the S and the R. Oh, yeah, that's what I said, the H. Yeah, silent H, wait, Ray... Ray Shremmerd, Ray Shremmerd. Yeah, Ray Shremmerd, yeah. Did I say- but do they say it Ray Shremmerd? Like, no, no they, no, they say Ray Shremmerd, but there's just no H, like, in the actual name. Like, they could have just oh, added it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't think that's how a sound letter works, but, you know. That's so silly. Why did they do that? If Slim Jimmy's gonna say it, though, like, I'll listen to him. Slim Jimmy! <laughs>
<laughs> Slim Jimmy's crazy. No, I love, I love Ray Trimmer. That's that was, <laughs> that was low key stupid of me. <laughs> have you heard the third or fourth albums? Because I haven't, but I don't think like I'm missing much. I haven't fully heard them. My friend has. He says that they're okay, but I've never actually been able to like. I've heard a few songs from the last one they released but not the third one i don't think is this one a song called like classic. free dick right or something like that <laughs> i think so <laughs> there's there's a good song on it i think there's like a, isn't it like a rage album or something or there's something there's a song on it that's like ragey or something i don't know i don't remember but i haven't listened to either of them wait you know what would be crazy what if they did like a jerk album i feel like that would be good Jerk would be crazy, yeah, I could hear that, low-key. That's beautiful. That's a great idea. Yeah, or, like, no, I feel like they did Jersey Club would get annoying. If it was, like, the whole album. Oh, no, I yeah. couldn't hear it. I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. stand that. I'd actually get, like, fed up with them. I could not handle that. Uh-uh. You have an extremely close relationship with Young Rat Poison, and his SoundCloud bio even says that his songs are all produced by you, unless specified otherwise. So, how did you guys first meet? Oh gosh, okay, I was at the pool, and he was too, and down here, nobody's like, nobody was like, this was back in 2018, nobody was like, cool with like, things that I knew about, like SoundCloud rap and stuff like that, I think, we literally met over Billy Marcia Fava, and talking about like, Young Gravy, and that's, (laughs) uh how we started like first becoming friends and then he had to he had to find me on discord through a spider-man server he had to join a public spider-man server and go through the members list and find me and that's how we uh that's how we that's how we became friends yeah that was crazy that's that's my brother that's my big brother forever i love him to death uh i wanted to go to his house so we could be in this interview just in the background but I couldn't go. Yeah, but maybe for I lo- the inevitable Young Rap Poison interview, though. Yeah, the twin interview. Um, I'm so excited to, to like, work with him more because he's, like, that's actually, like, my brother. And we have a tape coming out soon, and it's 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 going to be all, like, mm-hmm. out and everything, and we're excited. Uh, shout out, shout out, shout out Young Rap Poison. Shout out him. He's, he's genuinely, like... Day one, day one till the end forever. I will, he will ever, forever be in my dues and my respects and my love and my care. That's, that's my big brother. We live together type. Like, if y'all, if y'all knew what this man was like with me through, like he's, I love him. I love him to death. That's my brother. Genuinely. Also, like, I can't even imagine his sound like without your production either. Like, I feel like he's just so like tied together. Yeah, we're really yin and yang with that. Like, I I produce everything mostly, and I also like am really involved in the mixing of like the the song with the the beat. So like, I uh, that's that's really like what ties together our sound. I think is the way that like, I we it's like both like a vision that I kind of like bring to life with within like what he brings me and what I want to bring with it. So like us and like nowhere kids is like a the 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 andrew tape is or the young rat poison tape is going to be like the nowhere kids collective tape because that's me and him Uh as a duo so i didn't know what that was actually i hear i hear him say that like all the time but i didn't know like what it was yeah it was uh it came from a shinedown song uh it's it's the shinedown songs named nowhere kids and he was like yeah that's the hardest thing ever we're taking that for a name and i was like yeah we are mm-hmm. yeah that's awesome and that's what uh that's what spawned everything it's for it's it's it really fits both of our like what we bring musically i think we both have like a lost feeling to everything mm-hmm. with, like the vapory and hazy haziness of it but yeah another artist you work with thought is mercy in the well who you mentioned earlier and who's actually been on the show before uh, and yeah. considering him and Young Rap Poison are your two most frequent collaborators, how are your processes of working with them different? Me and Mercy, I think, have a collective consciousness in terms of how we bring like music together. I, it's hard to explain. I feel like me and him really tap into this like collective idea and like. It's not more so like I'm like fully together and like producing the sound. It's that I produce the sound like 
beat and he's very like I think I come off as like how I'm trying to make the song like feel like me and he's trying to explain how he feels in the lyrics about him. Mm-hmm. That's like the clash with like with me and Young Rap Poison it's more so like a group project in terms of like nowhere kids more so as like a glued together project like process within like my sound and like the warping of it i'm kind of like a, it's kind of like i'm dj hosting his music with also producing the instrumental mm-hmm. whereas mercy's like an actual like gl- collaborative project yeah and you think that the fact that mercy can like produce some music has like an impact on that also since like andrew can't like make his own beats yeah me and me and mercy are like working together beat wise and uh I want I want Andrew to start like learning how to make beats so like me and him can actually produce together because me and YRP were like really like tapped in with stuff like that. I want to like I want him to be more in the creative process behind like whether it's adding like some like collage or aspects or like like percussive whatever instruments whatever. I want I want him to like I want him to be in that process. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that would give us more like. A cohesive like consciousness feeling mm-hmm. your music oozes of melancholic nostalgia yearning for a simpler time that we can no longer return to and while it can be sad at times i think it's important to appreciate the good times uh, one has had rather than dwelling on what's no longer there so that being said what is your favorite early childhood memory oh you're gonna make me cry <laughs> that's a beautiful question man oh that's that's wonderful oh lord uh, I could list off multiple. I could like rapid fire. Yeah, go, yeah, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> shout out my third birthday. Uh, I got I got a bunch of tech decks. I got a bunch of these things called wild grinders. They were like these. Okay, so Rob Deerdeck had this like little cartoon, and it was these skateboarder kids, and they were named wild grinders, and they would come in these little packages. I want to send you a picture of it, cause it's like low key beautiful. It's like. It's 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 genuinely a very just gorgeous thing to look at. They they had magnets in their feet and you would put them on the skateboard and it would like you could like hold on, I gotta show you this, sorry. Look at look at look at this. Wait. Isn't that awesome? Wait. <laughs> there, there oh go. shit, yeah. They were so cool, dude. I got those in like the little fingerboard tech bags and I had a Spider Man cake. And I was awesome. Uh, I think uh, the second best memory I had was probably playing Skate It for the Wii. And it was this skateboarding game. It was like Skate 1 or Skate 2, but ported from the Xbox to like a Wii and very badly made. Like it was was like this storyline where like an earthquake took over the world and you could skate all over it it was really funny it was like the uh the skate one map but just the earthquake like kind of like ruptured everything and it was really bad because it was on the wii and had to use flick it controls Mm -hmm. but yeah that those those two memories were probably like my favorites I, i i loved kindergarten i loved reading like books and stuff and like pete the cat that's probably like one of my best memories was sitting up in like the the school library reading pete the cat with, like the, the library lady okay yeah. me and my library have beef uh, when the, the first time when i was in kin- when i was in kindergarten it was her first time going there and i didn't know that you had to check out a book from the library so i was in right. there i was reading and then it was time to go and i found out that the book that we were supposed to check out was like our book that we had to read for like the rest of the week or whatever and i didn't get one so my teacher gave me one that was in her class and it was literally like i think maybe like 15 pages it was about like cavities or something and i had to reread that during reading time every single day of the whole week and it was 15 pages it's awful <laughs> a book about cavities is crazy i hate like teeth and cavities like that's terrifying oh yeah i hate teeth actually i have another teeth related story and i think of it with the library <laughs> uh, i was reading a captain underpants book in first grade and one of my teeth fell out oh, it was just blood all over the book page <laughs> so like that book probably still has my blood on it like in the library today <laughs> that's crazy. 
Yeah, uh, I used to love reading, like, back in the day. Like, I, the, my library was, like, my, my, my nook and cranny when I was a kid, and I, I had a really high reading level. I think a lot of my music is rooted in a lot of the books I used to read. Because, like, where Porcelain's, like, Bad Case of Stars and Stripes, that's from a book. It's a uh, something, something, Bad Case of Stripes. That's what I thought, yeah. Is that when the girl is, like, sick? Yeah, yeah. she has to eat the lima beads. To fix it, yeah, that's a beautiful book. Yeah, it's all it's all rooted in like my what I used to read as a kid. Honestly, that's that's where it like all began. Yeah, did you ever read the? I always ask people this: the the Bone graphic novels. Oh yeah, I loved the art style, man. I loved how they drew it. I always wanted to know how, but I can never draw. That's one of my like pet peeves. I can never do art. I can never draw. Like, uh, well, characters and stuff. I, I did, like, draw a little bit. I could never draw that. It made me so upset. I hated it. But, yeah, Bone was my bone was my cup and tea back in the day, honestly. Mm-hmm. I, I really lo- I read all of them. I had them all checked out at one point. Never checked them back in. Moved schools. Don't know where they're at now. So, I can't. That, that, yeah, I don't know where, they're, where they'd be right now. But, yeah, I loved Bone. So, to cool, shout out Bone. I don't know if there's anything problematic in Bone, but shout no, out No, just Bone. shout out Jeff Smith. He's the GOAT. I'm so sad, really? though, because there was supposed to be, like, a Netflix, like, animated series for it, and then they canceled it. That's so heartbreaking. Like, it was good. Like, I think Jeff Smith was involved with it, too, and they just never, like, went anywhere, which is so sad. That's so evil. Wow. It always, like, just reminded me of, like, I don't know. I, I, it, it was, like, a little, like... I had a phase of, like, wanting to learn how to actually do it myself, but I could never draw like that. I probably traced over it a few times, honestly. Did you ever have, like, characters you would try to, like, draw, like, a bunch? Uh, back in the day, (laughs) I would draw, like, little, like, comics that were just, like, to pass the time. And I would draw, like, there, there are some, like, I would draw, like... I don't know if you know what this is, but Venturian Tail, I would draw, like, them as, like, characters. Venturian Tail, they were these, like, YouTubers. I, they're really bad now. Like, apparently they're, like, really homophobic and, like, really hardcore, like, bad uh. people. But uh, I used to really like their older videos. They'd play Gmod a lot, and I'd draw them as, like, little Minecrafters. And, but I was really bad. But, like, yeah, I'd draw like that. And I'd make my own characters sometimes and try to draw, like, action, like, poses and all that and try to, like, do that. But I was always bad at it. I could never get with it for some reason. Yeah, I was drawing a bunch of, like, Steven Universe and, like, Invader Zim characters when I was in sixth grade. Like, I had a notebook, oh. and I would just go over it, like, through all the pages over and over again, just redraw them until I could get it perfect. So I can do, like, a yeah. perfect Zim now, but I think my, my Pearl is kind of not great. I used to do that with Undertale characters. I think I'd do that with, like, Sans a lot. Sans and, like, Gaster, because I always thought they were the coolest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, wait, when you played Undertale for the first time, did you know, like, what it was about? Uh, yeah, I'd watched, I'd watched, um, Jacksepticeye do the pacifist route, so I did the genocide route, and I did all that on my first time, like, time, I killed everyone and did everything like that, and, uh, yeah, I, I didn't know anything about, like, anything so everything that was like going on in the genocide route like that was mind-blowing that was that's like one of my top one core memories is beating the genocide route for the first time (laughs) beating sans was like that's that's what like turned on in my brain that i loved like hard games like that was was undertale honestly because that was that's such a fun fight i love that fight yeah i got steam just so i could play undertale like i had to beg my parents that's crazy. I got Steam because I wanted to play Geometry Dash. I love Geometry Dash. It's my fa- that's. I hate Geometry Dash, but it's my favorite game ever. Like it's so awful, but I love it. <laughs> it's like genuinely like perfect, but it's never play it. Never play Geometry Dash ever. Mm-hmm. I beg you. <laughs> I uh, and then I got I got Undertale after that. Then I got Super Meat Boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember when I was in fifth grade, I was asking my friend because I was on the Undyne fight and I didn't know that you had to run away. Oh, So I, yeah. I was talking to them about it at lunch. I was like, what do I do? Because I didn't get it. 
Because I think for like six hours, I was trying to beat Undyne by just sparing her and it wouldn't do anything. Because mm -hmm. I was really stubborn. Like, I had to watch a video really on how funny. to beat it, I think. Yeah, it's... it's. I, I remember loving Undyne's genocide fight, honestly. That's such a fun fight. Like, learning that fight was like... I, I think something in my brain clicked on when I was, like, learning how to do her fight that, like, made me understand, like, okay, this game might actually, like, have some, like hard fights that I, I need to learn for but it, it's it's good i could probably no hit it like no hit run it right now mm -hmm. if i if i tried my hardest for like an hour but yeah i love i love undertale great game ruined my life mm -hmm. all right so on the topic of games so as a fellow member of gen z you and i both know that flash games were inescapable growing up so what were some of your favorite flash games or like browser games Oh, okay. Uh, Final Fantasy Sonic X. It, it was this, like, Final Fantasy Sonic, like... It had, like, up to ten parts, I think, and ten was the last one. But it was, like, this, like... I don't even know how to explain it. It, it was so funny. There was this X-Men game I used to play, too, where you would have to, like... I don't know, I was really into X-Men. And I, uh, I would play this, like weird game where you were like wolverine or something and you had to like Wait, these was that tunnels. on frames i think so and you had to like cut the wires on one of them or something okay, I, I never played it but i always saw the icon for it like on there yeah it was like an x-men game or something i don't know if it was like a wolverine game or what but yeah i would play a lot of spider-man flash games man like so many and there's this uh it was like a sonic character oc creator i think they had on new grounds Newgrounds is where I grew up on. Like that, I love Newgrounds. I'm a big like Newgrounds fan. But yeah, um, Sushi Cat. Sushi Cat was my goat back in the day. That game is so fire. Shout out Sushi Cat. I think there was like Super Smash Flash. I think that was a really mm -hmm. fun one. And there's probably like a few like other ones that I played that a lot. Like I. I just, that's some of my earliest memories was like playing Flash games and watching Spider-Man, so, yeah. I was playing a Flash game with my friend recently, because we used to play this one called Get on Top a lot. But there was this other, no, 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 no so the way the game worked was you, there'd be these two guys and their arms are connected here and you have to like flip the other one over. Okay, I know what game you're talking Yeah, so there was that one, but there was this <laughs> other one we would play like all the time. We couldn't remember what it was called, but... So maybe you might know, because my little brother didn't know either. Um, but mm. there are these two guys, and you can, like, you're on, like, moving platforms and stuff, and you have to kick the other person off, like, the platform. And there's, like, crazy, like, knockback. What are you talking about? I remember, like, no, that wouldn't have been, I don't know what that is. I think I actually lost the time then, because, like, I tried looking on Reddit. Was it on r slash tip of my joystick? It might have been, but it was all talking about gun mayhem, which is the same yeah. idea, but with guns instead of with no. feet. I remember, like, back in the day, I'd play, like, every Flash game I could. I loved Primary. That was the one where you would, like, you would be these, like, three colors, and you'd go in the hotel, and you'd change colors, and you'd go in, like, an elevator or something. And then there's this one... Oh, I, my favorite were the ones that were in Unity in 3D but couldn't run, like, at all. Like, they never run properly, and they were on, like, Flash, and they were on my, like, my grandma's, like, 2012 computer, and it just wasn't, like, working at all. Like, so, I, I loved those a lot. They'd play at, like, two frames per second, and I enjoyed every moment of trying to play that stupid little, like monkey run game on facebook sorry i got mad <laughs> did you play the one this is what you made me think of it's where it's like the the 3d ball is rolling down the hill and you have to like make sure you jump over the platforms it's like black and like green got the yeah black yeah yeah and green or black and purple yeah that's that's such a good one honestly yeah that one was on cool math i think yeah yeah Oh, gosh. Cool Math was honestly, like, that was after, like, my Flash game peak had fallen off. But I, I understood. I played that a lot when I was growing up in school. Because I would play a lot of Flash games when I was, like, six. Oh, shout out Starfall. Shout out Starfall. I love Starfall. 
cannot start full. No, did you do the snowman game? <laughs> yes, I don't start full. I love the pickle one. I love. <laughs> There's one about like something, some like saying about a pickle, and you like have to count all the pickles. And you, it was I love Starfall. Yeah, shout out Starfall. Did you ever do um Fun Brain? Yeah, yeah, I remember Fun Brain. Yeah, I remembered all those because like I remember I'd have like I don't I I don't think they were like my family members, but they're my family members' friends that couldn't play some certain like website, so they'd have to do like the restricted ones like Starfall and like Go Math and like all those like slow little I websites. forgot about Go Math. Oh Go Math <laughs> Go Math is crazy. Yeah, shout out Starfall. Mm. I, I need to get a Starfall hoodie. I'm gonna make Starfall merch. This is other game that's in like everyone's collective consciousness that I've talked to. Did you ever play like the PBS Kids like Wildcrafts like open world game? See, I told you. Ooh, I remember they they didn't just have that one. They had the one that had the animal flying game. You played as like a I don't know. It was like a flying animal. You'd play as like that too. But yeah, I remember you when you'd go up in like the little tree house and everything, and it was like, oh, wow. Wow, I didn't know. Wow, I played this one game. I don't know if you would know it. It was called Block Miner, and it was like you were like a gopher, and you were mining, and it was like Terraria, and but like not Terraria, and it had no bosses, but you just mined. Mm -hmm. And so I loved Minecraft at the time, so I just tried to play that, but it wasn't good. I think I, I think I had a girlfriend on that app when I was like <laughs> six. <laughs> Shout out, shout out her if she's still alive somewhere. Shout out her. I miss you. I beat Kevin Got Swag 3 in the last episode, and I don't have to continue my streak, so can we play Rock, Paper, Scissors? I'm on Absolutely. a two-person streak right now. I'll close my eyes. Okay. okay. <laughs> Are we going on Rock, Paper, Scissors, Shoot? On Shoot, rock, yeah. Paper, okay. That's okay. two out of three. All right. Rock, Paper, Scissors, Shoot. Uh. Oh, uh, you got me. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Uh, okay. Rock, paper, scissors, paper, shoot. Scissors. Oh, we tied. Oh, uh, okay. 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 Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, we tied. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Dude. Okay. Uh, okay. rock, paper, scissors, shoot. No, Dude. no way. <laughs> rock, rock, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Okay, right, so we're right, tied. Right, we're tied right, now. Okay. Rock, Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Oh, we tied. Oh my god. Rock, Rock paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Oh, you know, oh. if I had to lose to anyone though, like I'll, I'll take you because I thought Kevin got swag three would have taken me down because he just has all that like aura behind him, but the swag. All the swag, but the no, swag. you got me. <laughs> And well, I like to think I'm of sorry. it. No, don't apologize. You earned that. But like all the energy of all the past nine guests is inside you now. Oh, I forgot to mention. This is the, the this what? The, <laughs> no, this, this is the tenth episode. We're double digits oh, now. Beautiful. We're, you're double digits. I'm so I'm so happy to see how far you've grown. I'm so I'm so delighted to be the tenth man. Yeah, I I'm forgot so to proud. mention the last one because for Kevin's interview, which. That was the, so when I was doing LADCast, I only ever made eight episodes, so the last video, like, proved that I could go further than that, but I forgot to say that, because I think I was just, I don't know, it was like, we were filming it at a weird time, so I was kind of, like, not in the mindset to do it, because right. I was about to go eat dinner, and then he told me, like, oh, we can do it now, and I was like, okay, so. Right, delaying dinner's crazy. You know, I had to go. Yeah. I had to go get. You know, because the dining hall closed at eight, and we finished at like nine. So, I had to go get in and out for for dinner. Right. Oh, you don't have it there, crazy. do you? No, we don't have in and out. I, whenever, whenever, like, I wanna, I wanna come through and like try like in and out so bad. Like that's crazy. I need to pipe. We whenever, whenever the whole like thing happens with the show, like, uh, is it like? Is everything in the works? You, like, like the June first show? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That's like official. Yeah. Okay. I'm really trying my hardest to get down there. 
and like pop out because I really love all the people involved and I really want to like support that and I think if I could it would be good for me I think that'd be awesome so yeah y'all might see me there yeah I, I really hope hopefully. so because I know because Mercy's trying to go right yeah 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 D- me and Mercy are gonna go crazy I'm so excited yeah because Mercy's be gonna be this. there Doomsday is gonna be there <laughs> Uh, I talked to Kevin about it during the interview. He might he might be there. That's insane. Um, I'm trying to think oh. who else I've had on. And yeah, Backby's gonna be performing. Right. Like I was thinking oh, of doing I'm like. I'm so excited to be Carter. Oh, I love dude. that man. I love I've known that. Carter since 2015, so it's like. Carter, like that's my that's I love him to death. Like I want I want the best. He is so talented. Shout out Carter, man. Him. Shout out. Shout out. I don't even know what to refer to him as, honestly. D- DJ Kratom. Shout out DJ Kratom. Shout out them, too. They have really, like... It, without them, I would not be, like, more inclined to the stratosphere of making music right now. Shout out both of them to death. Shout out you. You are, like, the... You you <laughs> low-key, like, are some, one of the only reasons this is happening right now. Like, you... I'm so, I have so much to thank for, like, you as a person. Because you... I wouldn't be making music without you. I would have been done. You made me experiment so much. You pushed me out of my comfort zone. I appreciate you. Dude, thank you. You're the go-to. Like, I, besides, like, Higgin, you're the first person I, like, ever work with on a song. Like, exactly. And that song never even came out. But, like, you're the first person that I ever did that with, really. We low-key got to drop that. We Like, we need to make that a reality sometimes. No, so I, I've been can. thinking I might do, like, my own. Because I know, like, DJ Creative. I don't know what to say. But he did his own, yeah. like, compilation project, and then you have Dream Journal. So, like, I might need, like, when I go home for the summer, I might need to just drop, like, The Vault. Right. Because there's just so, like, I had a whole, not a whole album, but, like, I had, like, I think you remember this, but, like, I had an album I was making in, like, 2022 that just never went right. anywhere. Although, low-key, it was, like, kind of proto, oh, I, I shouldn't say that because I didn't announce it yet. Yeah. But, Proto, proto redacted proto proto redacted it's kind of like the ideas on there are like yeah like uh we that needs to be in like something because that 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 song's low-key important that's the first time like i had ever that's the first collab i had ever done that's that was pre like usb malfunction i think so yeah that's, yeah yeah wow that's crazy yeah, because even with my, like, Hicken collabs, those were always, I would send him something I'd done, and then he would do his own thing with it. So that was the first time someone had something, something than me, and then I did something with it. So, right. Yeah, very special place in my heart. Yeah, I, I love you. You're, 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 you're one of the brothers in my heart, truthfully. I appreciate you in my life. Thank you. Uh, so you recently released a self-titled project under the alias Walmart, and as I was revisiting that project for this interview, I realized it was making me really hungry for some reason, which begs an important question. <laughs> what is your go-to gas station snack? I can't believe I just made that face. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me think, because that's, that's a beautiful question. Um, all right, there's gotta be, I gotta kind of name more than one. Shout out Sunflower Seeds. That's usually, that's like one of my, like, I've had a low-key addiction to those throughout my life. Like, if I ever pick up a bag of sunflower seeds, I'm eating the whole thing in, like, one sitting. And my mouth gonna be dry as hell afterwards. No problem. I'm dr- I'm eating that entire bag. I love chips. I love chips. Like, uh, I like the, the purple bag of Doritos. Like, I, I don't like anyone who doesn't. Do you like the purple bag Doritos? I don't like Doritos. Actually, that's a lie. I like the red Doritos, and that's it. Okay, well, you need to have the purple bag of Doritos. I like the purple bag of Doritos. But they also make this, like, tangy barbecue bag. And it's, 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 you wouldn't think that, like, you'd want, uh, like, me and my, my friend Jacob were talking about this. You wouldn't think that you'd want, like, a tangy barbecue Dorito until you had a tangy barbecue Dorito. And it's low key, like, everything to me. Like, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh,. I'm a big beef jerky fan. I really, really, really love beef jerky, like more than anything in the world. That's that's the, the, the those are my go-to's. I used to love candy, but I don't be getting it anymore. I don't know why. That's probably for like, the best, though. 
Yeah, it's it, it started to get to a point where I would I would just eat it and it would make me feel bad and like it would get all stuck in my teeth and I don't like that. And yeah, I can't handle like textures like that if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm having an issue recently where what I'll do is when I go on a long walk, I'll go to the campus convenience store because it's like right in front of my dorm, and I'll go get like peach rings or something. And that was fine at first because like you know long walk I I, I deserve it, but the problem is I go on a walk like pretty much every day. So then I'm getting peach rings every day, and I feel like that's probably not great for me. Okay, okay, low-key, take back what I said about candy. Peach rings and Swedish fish are crazy, and that's about all. I, and the, okay, sweet tart, the sweet tart ropes, the cherry ones, those are good. Mm-hmm. Those are great. Those are impeccable. Uh, the Airhead Extreme belts, those are crazy. That's it, that's it, that's it. I can't eat no more candy. That that and those are probably like the worst candies for me, but that's all I like. And the trolley gummy worms. Those oh are yeah. But I won't grab them. I won't grab them, but I love them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't like airheads because they're too like, like not chewy, but just like hard. Like you have to really bite into it. Well, I'm not talking about like the airhead like wrapper ones. I'm talking about the ones that you get at like a football game, and they have like a, it's like a tray, and there's like rainbow sour. Oh, the rainbow, the rainbow ones are great. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, those are too. Those are too good. I have a candy tier list. I'll I'll send the candy tier list, and I want people to like. I want people to tell me if i understand if they understand it or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, I need I need to know that. You touched on this at the very start of the interview, but you're in a, you're a member of the collective Star Forum, along with other members such as Seventeen Magazines, DJ Kratom, Allen, and Orange. And I was talking to Seventeen Magazines recently as a form that there's a Star Forum album currently in the works. So is there anything you'd like to share with us about the process, about what the process has been for working on it, and what to potentially expect as a listener? Me and everyone who is contributing to that project, and that is locked in a time capsule of when I, we all made that project. Like, that is, besides, like, finishing verses and all that, the project, sonically, is so, like we gave that like that was some of the most creative sound design i have ever done and i that's all i can say about it until like further whatever releases because i i it needs to be like it that's gonna be it's it's incredible i i'm i don't like to like make myself like sound incredible but that we we put our all into that and it's gonna be it's gonna be impeccable it'll be out eventually yeah i'm really excited for that because like I feel like you and, like, DJ Kratom, like, I feel like y'all can go so, like, crazy. And, like, also Orange. It's, like, everyone in there. But, like, I feel like especially with you two together, it has to be some of the just craziest, like... I just... Orange is... Shout out, I mean... Uh, shout out, Orange. Shout out, Orange. Just shout out, Orange. They are so talented. They are so talented. The... Oh, gosh. Orange is, like, one of the, like, best experimental electronic, like, ambient stuff I've ever heard, period, out of the genre. Let alone, like, my favorite, like, artist, friend, whatever. They are great. Like, I love them to death. That's, like, one of the people that can, like, speak to me. And I just, we, we've had, like, great talks. They love, we love each other's music. They're a very good person. Just shout out Orange, genuinely. Uh, more on like the electronic stuff in Star Forum. Uh, there's a release on it a little bit ago by a friend of mine, who I love dearly. Bodies of Two. They released that uh the their self-titled project, and it's very beautiful as well. And they're also in that electronic ambient Americana folk circle and it's beautiful. I love that project so much. I just want to shout out I want to shout out him too because that's yeah, Adam deserves the world man. I mm-hmm. love that man. Alright, and before you give any more shout outs as the episode comes to a close you know, is there anything else you'd like to give a shout out to? Uh, shout out Will Smith, not the actor but my friend. <laughs> shout out Ringo. Shout out Lunzilla. Shout out Mercy in the Well. Shout out Mercy in the Well forever. That's my that's my collective consciousness. Shout out Young Rat Poison again. Shout out you. 
Shout out, uh, shout out, Marcy. Uh, shout out, uh, shout out, uh, DJ Kratom. Shout out, Seventeen Magazine. Shout out, everyone that I've made music with. Shout out, me. Shout out, you again. I love you to death. Thank you for having me. I've always wanted to do something like this. Uh, shout out my uncle. Shout out my other uncle. Shout out Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Shout out Walmart. Shout out everything. I love everything. Shout out water. Shout out water. That's important. I got shout some out water, water right shout here. Shout out hydration. Drink the water. Don't don't drink anything else. Shout out water. Shout out love. Shout out Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Shout out childhood. Shout out Fooey. Shout out Heine. Shout out uh, Gabe. Yeah. <laughs> shout out everyone. Shout out all. Of, shout out Bug. All right. I think that's about all. All right. Well, yeah. And shout out Porcelain. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on today. It was really uh, awesome getting to so talk much. to you. And I hope you, the listener, had a good time listening as well. This has definitely been one of my favorite videos that we've done so far. So it's really awesome. Thank you. I love you to death. Like, genuinely, I want you to know that, like, this means a lot to me. You're the best ever. Thank I'll you so much you, for dude. Thank me, you so man. much for being here. Yeah. It's... See you, man. All right. It's been the Hidden Driveway Show. Goodbye. Bye-bye.